different for different individuals. It is the duty of a teacher, in my opinion, to preserve them. We should not iron out those individual differences. So it is always good to ask them to solve problems by giving an assignment or something like that. And they should solve on their own and come and show us. Then we can discuss if they are going wrong somewhere, we can help them. In that process, you will also learn many ways. Otherwise, you only know one way. But in this discussion, you will come to know different, different ways of solving a problem. Okay. Now, <coughs> as I told you in the beginning, answering a question is much easier exercise than asking a question. Okay. So, <coughs> sometimes I do an activity like this. I teach for one hour and then I ask them to summarize all that I taught in one hour in five minutes. Then I ask, can anyone summarize? The probability that one will get up is close to zero. Correct? So then I will have to really, you, your patience will run out. You want to make someone to get up and summarize. So instead of that, what I do is I ask them, please write down in your own notebook half a page summary of what has been done. Nobody needs to get up and say this. So they can write down. Out of 50 students, some 20 of them will write. Maybe 30 of them will not write. It doesn't matter. I will not insist to read what they have written. This is my request. Please write half a page summary or two line summary, one line summary, whatever you can write. Summarize the class in half a, in half a page maximum. That summary will bring a lot of change because they will think what has gone in the class if they have attended, if they were awake. And then if they are not able to write, it will actually pinch them. What is this? I'm not able to write even two lines. I have seen people who feel very bad, even though they don't show it, but we can read from the face. And then next class, they will be very attentive. Sensitivity you have to tap on. If someone is sensitive, then we have to create an activity such that we can bring them on board. Okay? And then another activity which I tried is that I tell them, okay, what all I taught today? Tomorrow there is an examination. Okay? This is not new for them. Many people conduct and uh, they can study and write the examination. But this examination is not for them, but this is for me. So I tell them, from what all I taught today, you people can sit together in groups and make questions. Some multiple choice questions, some two marks questions, some five marks questions, some 10 marks questions. Whatever questions that you can make, you make. Bring them, I will answer. Okay? So they don't have to, uh, they don't have to give me, they can just write it and put it in my mailbox. Okay, so I will collect them and then answer them in the class. This is a kind of a beginning where they will start thinking about how to question. There is a content, but you have to ask a question. Most of the times we see in the examination papers when we evaluate, you ask a question where the answer is this much, but they write the entire thing. Right? They do not know what is the answer for this question because, of course, they do also preparation in the last minute and they are in hurry. So, 
this is also another indication that there is no understanding. So this way of, if they prepare some questions, this you might have also tried, you are all teachers. Setting a question paper is not easy, right? That too, if you want to set some multiple choice questions, it's very difficult. You have to think a lot to set a very meaningful, good question, you have to think a lot. And that thinking will actually deepen your understanding of physics, whatever you have learnt. So preparing question is a very, very strong and useful method of deepening the understanding. Now, how do we make this, how do we make people ask questions? Okay. How do we make people ask questions? What is the reason why people don't ask questions? Suppose if we analyze this. The reason is, people are not confident of what they think is uh, substantial. Or they may have several questions in their mind, but they are not sure whether those questions are important questions or they are relevant questions. That is the difficulty they have always, right? Maybe some of you also experienced this when you were teachers, uh, when you were students. <coughs> now, who will decide whether the question is a silly question or a, <coughs> or a interesting question or a profound question? These, these things are all relative, right? I may think one question is profound, other fellow may think it is silly. So, we don't have to worry about these things. But then, if I tell, don't worry, ask question, nobody is going to ask question. So, what I always do is that, I tell them that, if I am starting a lecture, the topic is known to them. So, I tell them, you may have some questions about this. I, I, am, I think, uh, uh, he, he would remember, I did this in your college when I gave this lecture. So I told all the teachers, please do not consider yourself as teachers. As long as I am standing here, I am the teacher, all of you are students. And hence, shed are your inhibitions and then do what I say. This is what I said and I told them to write what, what are the questions that come to their mind. They don't have to tell me, they just have to write in their notebook. Okay. And while I am teaching, many of those questions will get answered. While they are getting answered, they will be able to judge whether their question is a silly question or a profound question. You do this repeatedly in several classes, after some class, one will get an idea that he is not asking, the questions I am asking are not that bad. They seem to be very interesting. They find answers and then they will open up because it is after all nice to ask a good question and get noticed by everybody, right? That's a nice feeling, isn't it? You ask a good question, everybody looks at you, it's a nice feeling. So, people will come out of this inhibition and start asking questions. And once they ask questions, you acknowledge and then you keep encouraging such things. Then over some time, people slowly come out of their shells and start asking questions. And once they start asking questions, we have a window to understand how much they are understanding. In fact, I have experience of training some students on a one-to-one -one basis. That means not in the class. So if a student is coming to me and discussing with some problems, I will carefully monitor how he is asking questions, he or she is asking questions. At some point, it's almost like a first-order phase transition. At least in 
half a dozen cases after listening one particular question i predicted that this time you will clear csr and they did that means if the nature of question will tell you how is the understanding one particular question one of the candidate uh, <coughs> um, i said this year you are going to get phd somewhere this year you are going to clear csr just based on the question you will get a clear idea how their understanding is improving so questioning ability has to be improved in science i think it's also true in other subjects but in science very very necessary that we should ask them to teach a uh, question <coughs> second thing is it is important as far as possible to minimize certain notions that we accept as far as possible we should attempt to reason out let me give you one example normally when we teach uh, younger students we say that sun is at the center all planets are moving around but if a kid goes out and makes an observation he will see that only sun is going around the earth and like this kid hundreds of years people believed that earth is at the center but now you are actually forcing on the student that no that is wrong this is right but we can present the kid a development that took place that why this geocentric theory is wrong and heliocentric theory is right so if we can make the student understand this development why this is wrong i'm 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 amazed that in most places they just give this information okay start from here that is all old story it's not correct so what is happening is that now science also is not following the reason you are asking the student to unreasonably accept that this may be a small thing only one example but this will have a bearing on the thinking ability of the student and you can accept this you can accept anything else so this is what i think as far as possible there are practical issues of course you have to complete the syllabus and all that you cannot do all these the practical issues but i am talking about an ideal situation where we should definitely make reasoning as far as possible used in the curriculum last thing is whatever we do finally students are judged by the examinations so are we if our students do very good we are said good teachers right and <coughs> examinations are different things usually students have i have some students who are very good in solving problems but they go to the examinations ex especially exams like the csir gate and they have a fear of those exams so they they cannot solve anything after they go blank inside the examination and they come out they can solve all the problems so there is something happens in that room in the examination room so there is a psychology that actually affects them in the examination hall so how do we address this question all good students are not able to clear the exam because something happens to them inside <coughs> and i don't find any solution in science for this but uh, so <coughs> you have to design you have to look for the solutions elsewhere now this uh, <coughs> so 
Normally, even in the sessional examination, internal examinations in our MSc, they will be so tensed. 